A survivor Prime Minister, I mean, I often think of Gloria Gaynor when I look at you. You're, you're doing well. I mean, the can kicking down the road has been a successful uh, policy, really, and, and the government goes on much against what many pundits probably thought. Following up on the Irish border uh, issue, I mean, the Irish independent today has a story saying a hard border inevitable uh, on the showdown with the World Trade Organization. Is there a hard border inevitable in Ireland? And of course, its implications for the, everyone else. No, I've, what we have set out in the Chequers Agreement and uh, detailed in, the, in more detail in the White Paper is a proposal for a facilitated customs agreement and the uh, regulatory uh, arrangements that would ensure that we did not have a hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. Uh, one of the, this is one of the factors that we've been considering throughout this uh, process. Uh, we have been over the uh, last two years. As you know, we waited to trigger Article 50 to do some preparatory work for that. We've then been working on all of these uh, elements in, this, in what is a complex set of negotiations. Okay. And we've put forward a proposal that it would uh, deliver no hard border in Northern Ireland. Of course, uh, the, the hard border on, that's much talked about in Ireland is merely the EU-UK border on the island of Ireland. Um, this is going to apply to every other uh, border that the UK will share with the European Union. Uh, what's going to be happening at Dover? What's going to be happening everywhere else? Oh, we have, the proposal that we have put forward, we've always said that I think actually... This morning we heard the Dutch are hiring a thousand more customs officers. They're expecting difficulty by the look of it, or at least preparing for difficulty. Are you? Well, everybody is, and we are uh, hiring more border officers because we're pre preparing for all contingencies. Uh, but the proposals that we have put forward in the Chequers Agreement, as detailed in the White Paper, uh, set out a plan for the future relationship on customs and uh, certain areas of uh, regulation with the European, for trade with the European Union, which would enable us not to have, uh, not only to have a frictionless border between Northern Ireland and Ireland, but also to have a frictionless border between the UK and other member states uh, of the uh, and member states of the European Union. Okay. And and, if I may just make this point, of course, Briefly, from the point of view of the Irish economy, that east-west trade between Ireland and uh, Great Britain is, of course, a more significant element of their economy than the trade between Northern Ireland and Ireland. They, they, they already say that, but, of course, these are borders UK to EU. So is your situation, you're out of the customs union, you're out of the single market, and you don't have borders. Is that, is that basically what you're telling us? Well, if you looked at the white paper and the uh, agreement that we came to in Chequers, you will see that the proposal we're putting forward is that we're no longer a member of the customs union, we're no longer a member of the single market, we have put forward a proposal for the common rule book in a specific area of uh, good, industrial goods and agri-food, uh, and uh, the customs arrangement that, uh, that can go alongside that, those which would deliver frictionless borders. Where else in the world does this exist? Well, it doesn't. It's a novel idea. It is Absolutely, a novel idea. Very novel but idea. I, would, I would sincerely hope that you wouldn't suggest to me that the only approach that the United Kingdom can government, government can take to this is simply to say what else exists and what's, what can we take out of that, rather than saying, actually, what is the arrangement that we think is going to be best for the UK? Let's put that, uh, let's put that forward and let's argue for that in those negotiations. That might be an argument you have on one hand, others might say pie in the sky on the other hand, and we'll have to wait and see which one, which one it is. Um, you triggered Article 50 uh, to leave in March 2019. You then went in Florence to ask for 24 months. Uh, the EU gave you another 21 months. Do you have enough time uh, for your novel ideas uh, to get yourself out of the European Union, Prime Minister? Yes, we're all working. Both sides in this negotiation are working to the same timetable. We will be leaving the EU on the 29th of March 2019, as you've indicated in your question, the implementation period, which is a period which enables businesses and government to prepare for the future relationship, will end in December 2020. Uh, we're still working to the timetable of ensuring that we have the withdrawal agreement and the sufficient detail of the future relationship agreed by October such that that can then become before Parliament. I've always said that I think when this Parliament, and indeed I think the same will be true of the European Parliament, although their job will be a slightly different one, when this Parliament is asked to put withdrawal agreement and implementation bill legislation through the House, they will want to know uh, what the arrangements are for the future relationship, and that's what we're working to. So you think we have time. Okay, um, is American uh, UK, USA UK trade deal still on the cards, do you think? Yes or no? Because we're really yes. Yes, okay. That's worth about 0.2% of GDP. What is your government's estimate of the loss to GDP from your <coughs> exiting the EU option? Well, 
It's 5%, often, isn't it? Very often, people look at this equation as if one substitutes for the other. What no, I'm looking to I just asked you for the no, estimated no, no, figure. No, no, no. What I think I'm it's important that we get the figures, because you agreed the first I'm, figure point two very quickly. What I'm, I'm looking for uh, the agreed the 5%. You stated the first figure of point well, two. You, you, what didn't, you didn't demur from it. What I'm looking at is ensuring that we can both maintain a good trading relationship with the European Union and also build on that with new trading, uh, improved trading relationships around the rest of the world. Now, obviously, one of the uh, initial things that we'll be doing is we'll be looking at continuity of those agreements which the European Union already has with certain parts of the world, okay. where we're a member of those, so there is no cliff edge for the businesses involved in those, uh, and then look to improve okay. on those <coughs> agreements. 5% damage is what, is what, your, um, what your government estimates, which is about two and a half times uh, the cost of, of the crash of 2008. To replicate that uh, with the American style agreement, you're going to need about 25 to 30 of those type agreements to make up the difference. It really is, having bought the Rolls Royce, having crashed the Rolls Royce, you're now going down the second hand car shop to look for the, possible, the best possible second hand car for the United Kingdom. Uh, these, it's, not, it's not going to make up for the damage you've chosen with your government to go for a, a quite hard Brexit uh, for the economic damage you're doing, is it? First of all, what we are doing is delivering on a vote that was taken by the British people. Parliament voted six to one to give the British people the choice here. as to well, that's fine, but I'm sorry, because the, the alternative to what you're suggesting is actually staying in the European Union. So you Union. accept economic damage the, the, No, no, I'm not accepting that. You are oh, talking like about, you're talking about the position we're in in terms of the negotiations for leaving the European Union. The reason we're doing that is because we asked people what they wanted to do. They have said they want us to leave the EU, the and that is what the government the will vote. deliver. In delivering on it, we're delivering on what people voted for, like an end to free movement, uh, but we're also ensuring that we do it in a way that protects jobs. That's what the Chequers Agreement delivers. That's what the White Paper delivers. We'll have a referendum in Scotland to discuss that.